We've now defined the idea of a budget line and the budget equation that gives rise to that budget line. And we've looked at what happens if your economic circumstances change, if your income changes, or if the prices that you face change. Now that budget line is a set of baskets of goods that you can afford and have no money left over. We can define that set in set notation where we use curly brackets to indicate the set and say that this is the set of points, so x1 and x2, that lie, that are an element of, the two-dimensional space with positive numbers. So that two-dimensional space with positive numbers is everything here, but the bundles that lie on the budget line are those where the spending, which is P1 times X1 plus P2 times X2, is equal to your income. So we would write this as, this is the set of points that lie in this space, such that, so this vertical bar is read as such that, my spending is equal to my income. That's the set of points, the set of bundles, that lie on the budget line. Now, those are not the only bundles that are affordable to you. They're just the bundles that are affordable to you where you spend all of your income. You could, of course, choose a bundle like this. If you choose a bundle like this, you're gonna be able to afford that, but you'll have some income left over. In fact, all of the bundles that lie below the budget line are affordable to you. You just have some money left over. And so that set that's created by the budget line and all the points below it is called the budget set. These are all the affordable bundles for you. And to denote this in set notation, all we have to do is change that equality to an inequality that says my spending has to be less than my income less than or equal to my income. So the budget line is included in the budget set, but it also includes all the points, all the bundles where you don't spend all of your money. So that then is the typical shape of a budget set. But throughout this, we've assumed that no matter how many of the goods you buy, you always face the same prices. That's what gives us the nice linear shape of the budget line. But there are circumstances where the prices you face may change depending on how much of the good you buy. And there'll be some interesting policy applications of that later on. For now, the simplest scenario I can think of is the case of a coupon. Suppose you have a coupon that tells you that for the first 10 units of X1, you only have to pay half price, but you have to pay full price for everything beyond that. What would that do to the budget line and the budget set? So, for the first 10 units, you face a lower price. You only have to pay half price. And we know what a lower price does to the budget line. If the price falls, the budget line becomes shallower. So you would face a shallower budget line for the first 10 units and in a steeper budget line for all the units after that, because you're gonna to have to pay the higher price, higher prices for good one involve a steeper budget. So we get a budget that looks something like this, where you have a shallow slope up to the first 10 units and a steeper slope after that. And the budget set would be everything below that, including that budget line. Or we could think of a different type of coupon, a coupon where for the first 10 units, you have to pay full price, but all the units after that are half price. So in that case, we would have a high price for the first 10 units and then a low price after that. High prices for good one mean steeper slopes, low prices mean shallower slopes. So the slope would start steep, but then it would become shallow. The budget set would be all the bundles 
that lie on that budget line as well as all the ones that lie below. So depending on which way the price changes as you buy more of the good, you might get a kink in the budget that points out, or you might get a kink that points in. Now in part I'm introducing this to introduce an idea about sets that I'd like you to know. We call this kind of set a convex set. A convex set is a set of points such that if you pick any two points in the set, the line that connects those two points also lies within the set. So in this case, we could pick, for example, this point and this point. The line that connects these two points lies fully within the set. And that will be true for any other two points that we pick. If that's true, then we have a convex set. But if we have a set like this, we can find two points where if we connect those two points with a line, that line lies fully outside of the set. It's not true for every point. There are some points we could pick where the line that connects them lies within the set. But as long as we can find two points such that the line that connects them lies outside of the set, we call that a non-convex set. So if you ever forget the definition of convex and non-convex sets, think of a simple example. Suppose you have a circle that's fully filled in. That's a set of points. And it's a set of points that's a convex set, because any two points I pick lie fully within that circle, within that filled in circle. But if I make this into a donut with a hole in the middle, then it becomes a non-convex set, because now I can pick two points, and the line that connects them lies outside of the donut. It lies in the donut hole. So that makes this a non-convex set. Now typically, we will have budget lines that are just straight lines, because typically, consumers face the same prices regardless of how much they consume. So in that case, we would have a set that is in fact a convex set. Any two points I pick in that set, the line that connects them lies fully within the set. Even if I pick two points that lie on the budget line, the line that connects them also lies on the budget line. So it still fully lies within the budget set.